Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Taking a look at today's markets, we have the NASDAQ up quarter of 1%, the Dow down one third of a percent, the S&P 500 essentially break even, the Russell 2000 down three quarters of a percent. The Russell was the big outperformer yesterday. And again, right now, that's what I'm hoping for. It makes the most amount of sense. The valuations of the big seven, the mega seven, um, you know, the companies that everyone owns, the the Amazon, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, Meta, Google, Apple. Um, they all have rich valuations or to various degrees of richness. For instance, I think Google is cheaper than Apple. I think Meta is attractive for the long-term patient investor. I And again, depending on where they are in earnings and how much the stock market's punishing them versus rewarding them, I'm going to have a different opinion on all of them. Essentially, I like them all. But I don't like rushing in at 52 week highs. I want to see the Ubers, the Adobe's, the Salesforce's, the Spotify's, the Expedia's. I want to see them have their day, so to speak. Sounds complicated. I know, I know, but um, I want to see some of the smaller names, the mid cap names, the international names do well. Um, not knocking where we are, it is what it is. Um, some of the stories from today, the 10-year treasuries hit 4.19%. Interesting. Very not cheap cost of money, but getting to the point where it really makes more sense for stocks over bonds. Not there yet. Historically, it makes more sense to buy bonds when they're 10 years above 4%, to buy stocks when it's below 4%, give or take 25 basis points, depending on your level of risk. Um, today, we saw job openings in October slowed. And um, that's the JOLTS report, the job openings from 9.35 million in September to 8.73 million last month on a year over year level. It's also down from 10 million to 8.7 million. So the job market's getting a little bit tighter. Job market's um, not looking for employees. So when you go to your boss and say, I want to raise, he can now say, take your job and shove it. <laughs> You want to raise, you got to go look for another company. Um, not quite there yet, but again, the trend, the trend is something we pay attention to in this industry. So the treasury yield moving lower is a big story. The mega caps bouncing back is slightly disappointing to me, um, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, as long as the small caps slowly but surely make headway, I'm cool with what I'm seeing. Um quick jump into let's see if i can do this oops hold on sorry i was opening something that i wasn't so uh, the market rally that we're seeing is broadening does it pass the smell test though Stock market has a big weight on its shoulders. The mega cap malaise yesterday turns into a mega cap rebound today. The NASDAQ's up over 35% for the year. It's done its work. Rest, my friends, rest. If you just look at the mega cap growth ETF, it's up 44.2% this year. Investor sentiment readings skewing strongly to the bullish side of things have created a bit of contrarian headwind. I was talking to... Uh, financial planner. He talked about how just there's too much optimism for race cuts for next year. If we don't get five rate cuts, people are going to be disappointed. There's some truth to that. The Fed's saying we're not going to talk about rate cuts until we talk about rate cuts. And we're not seeing them right now. But the market's saying we see five. Um, which one do we believe? Um, the 4.19% on the 10 year treasury. It, It's cutting the return on your money markets, but it's making your mortgage cop, cop capital cheaper. It's making capital for corporations cheaper. Uh, let's just say we're paying close, close attention. Big weight on the market shoulders right now after having a big month of October. Some other stories that I'm working on today. Um, did you know that Amazon has a Christmas catalog? I bring this up right here, right now. 
because it's kind of interesting um, to know that that's a hundred year old catalog. It used to be called the um, Sears wish book. I grew up as a kid. I'd see it because we lived in military bases. My dad would order it by mail or he would call an 800 number or not even an 800 number. It's probably a long distance number back then is my guess. And then you could pick it up at the store or give you a ship to your house. Pretty convenient. And they had all sorts of crazy stuff at Sears. At one point in time in America, one out of five purchases were from Sears. So we've talked about that with Amazon, that if you can add up number two, three, four, five, like minus Amazon and Walmart, no one's even close to them. That's how big uh, the retail numbers are for the big giants. It's interesting that Amazon's going into paper and going into mail catalog um, and not necessarily going into physical stores. Sears died because they had too many physical stores. Amazon didn't. Amazon would deliver things from their warehouse to your home. Sears died because they had 10,000 cubic square feet of retail space that you have to pay rent on every month. So Amazon's not making their same mistake. They're not doing the retail overlap, but Amazon, what they're doing is saying, let's try things that are a little different, like groceries and medical attention, where people still like go into the stores, um, healthcare, medical attention. Why did I say that? <laughs> makes me sound, makes me sound old. Um, and I'm getting there for sure. So taking a look at some other stories, the market is struggling kind of a little bit. Airbnb CFO Dave Stevenson is moving to a new role as the company reaches an inflection point. Um, it is important. CFOs and CEOs have different styles. Some are regressive, some are conservative. So when you see that, you kind of want to keep an eyeball on where they land. Uh, SpaceX plans to uh, key NASA demonstration for the next Starship launch. That's exciting. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Don't forget, Thursday evening, 6.30 to 7.30, the Seven Steps for Retirement Readiness webinar. You can do this from your own home. Learn more at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. It's 6.30 to 7.30-ish. It'll run long. I'm Rob Black. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven steps for retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors Thursday, December 7th for a live webinar you can watch from home. Chad will walk you through these seven steps to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least $500,000 in investable assets and want to better gauge where your retirement stands, pass on your estate, and create tax efficiencies, this event is for you. The 7 Steps for Retirement Readiness webinar, Thursday, December 7th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Sign up today online at robblackshow.com. Can't make it to the live webinar? Register to receive an on-demand recording after the webinar concludes. Go to robblackshow.com. Two new words I've recently learned, doom spenders and doom savers. The world is so tough around us that young people, millennials and Generation Z, I've started doom spending. <clears throat> I highly recommend against it. Unless you've maxed out your 15% retirement savings. We have a big event coming up. The seven steps for retirement readiness with CFP Chad Burton, 630 to 730, 745-ish Thursday. It's right around the corner. You can sign up at chadburton.com or robblackshow.com. Seven steps for retirement readiness. Retirement readiness. Got marbles in my mouth. Tax efficient distribution strategies, taxes, health, wellness, investing, long term care, savings. You can sign up at chadburton.com. Joining me today, chadburton.com. Real quick, um, I know you're you have a health and wellness bin too. If you save a lot of money for a retirement. Uh, you need to be healthy to be able to spend it and enjoy it. Um, is that taught in the CFP curriculum or is that just you're adding one and one together? Oh, no, that's that's taught by this is the 30th year in the business and just just by overall experience, even within my own family. Yep. Um, I, I just, you know, there's a couple of things, Rob, you know, getting into the business at 19 years old with my grandfather who was in his 60s. Um, 
in the first five years, I finally had to say, Hey, I, I'm, I will not go to any more funerals. He had a lot of clients that were passing away and it was like, <laughs> it was a constant situation. And, um, but then I noticed sitting in meetings, um, a lot of the conversations were always driven around who's going to the doctor when, what are the new medications? What are the new ailments? What can't I do now that I used to be able to do? And that's always stuck with me. And then just seeing people over the years in terms of who seems to be the happiest in retirement, regardless of how much money they have, it's the people that stay very busy and very active and focus on health and, and, and relationships. So it's, it causes me even to make sure that I'm doing the things that I want to do and making the memories with my kids and bucket lists and things like that. Now, even if it causes me to delay my retirement, because I've also seen that people that keep active um, cognitively and doing something that they enjoy, which is, this is something I absolutely enjoy. I don't mind doing it when I'm a little bit older. My grandfather did it into his eighties because his clients were his friends. And so it's, it's just has to do with, you can save all of the money that you want, but if you are not healthy and you're constantly dealing with doctor's issues and pain and inflammation and stuff like that, it's just, it, it makes for a rough retirement. I have a in-law who's 85 and he's counted 18 of his friends dead. And I made him laugh. I said, that won't be my problem. And he goes, really? Why? And I said, because I only have one friend. Oh, <laughs> wait, I thought it was me and Tony. So I thought you had two. Uh, one and a half. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to CFP chat. We don't hang out. We, we do like each other, but not like that, but uh, we don't hang out. We should hang out. Um, it seems that when people first retire, Chad, they have accounts all over the place. Is there any advantage of leaving your 401k at an old employer or should you consolidate it into an IRA individual retirement account? Well, it's, okay. So there's, there's a few cases, Rob, where people go into retirement. They don't really need the money yet. Mm-hmm. Um, they have other income sources, whatever it may be. And let's say you're retiring, um, early, right? Some in, in certain cases, 401ks will allow you to pull money out of it without a penalty after the age of 55. Whereas IRAs are 59 and a half. You can't pull from an IRA before the age of 59 and a half without a 10% penalty on what you pull out. So sometimes early retirement. And then sometimes, like I said, some people retire, they don't need to touch the money at all. They've, they don't really need additional advice and their 401k is super cheap and, and super good, but that that's not really that often. Um, because the wealth accumulation phase is somewhat easy, but the wealth distribution phase and tax planning, all the things that you can do, especially with taxes from the date of early retirement to when you start taking your first required minimum distribution, which is now the age of 73 for most people, um, it's usually better to roll it. Now, there are some states where 401ks, Rob, offer more protection from creditors. So if somebody feels like they're about to be sued or there's a, a pending litigation or something like that, mm-hmm. it might make sense to leave it in the 401k. Yeah. But uh, other than that, it, you know, the major problem is access to money, right? I mean, when a 401k, when an employer decides to change their 401k provider, and this happens really quite often, especially smaller companies, you know, as they're 401k plan starts, they work with like insurance companies to start the 401k. And then as they get over a million dollars in the plan between all their participants, they end up getting, you know, better and better providers and eventually get to like a Vanguard or a Fidelity. But every time they change something, let's say your employer is changing from John Hancock to Fidelity, you go through a blackout period and you could lose access to being able to draw money out of your account. And it's kind of a pain to pull money out of a 401k versus an IRA, where you can just set up an electronic link to your checking account or even write checks out of your IRA if you wanted to. Um, so it's usually better once you retire to consolidate your IRAs. And in the past, we used to have separate IRAs that we added to. It had to be separate from IRAs that were rollovers from 401ks. That's not the case anymore. You can consolidate everything, um, all of your P-tax IRAs and 401ks into one IRA account. Um, And it's really important to do that for those that are at required minimum distribution age. 
And what I mean by that is once a person hits the age of 73, that's going to go up to 75 and several years later. But for most, it's 73 right now. You have to start pulling money out of your IRAs, 401ks, and 403bs. So, Rob, if you had like retirement, you're 73, you have like 10 different IRAs. Right. You could add them all up and calculate your required minimum distribution and just take that amount, that total amount out of one IRA if you wanted to. You don't have to right. take a small amount out of every single one. But if you have an IRA and a 401k, you have to take one for the IRAs, one for the 401ks. If you have multiple 401ks, you have to take one out of every single 401k. So it wow. becomes an administrative nightmare after 73 to have stuff all over the place. Um, so that's why you do want to start to consolidate. Um, it helps you keep an eye on your asset allocation. Um, it helps you control your income. Um, oh, one big thing, Rob, is that when people are gifting to charity, after age 70 and a half, one of the best ways to give to charity is right out of your IRA account. You can give up to a hundred grand a year from your IRA directly to your favorite nonprofit organization and avoid paying taxes on that money. And then the charity doesn't pay taxes on it either. So that can happen out of an IRA versus a 401k or it's a real pain to do that. What you just did reminded me of the movie line from Peggy Sue got married where she goes back in time and she tells her algebra teacher, I'm pretty sure I can tell you that I'll never use algebra in my life. And I think I can say that, Chad, until I hit required minimum distributions and the algebra is going to come roaring back. With that said, we have more Chad Burton content. What is the process of a rollover? Nuances of 401k rollovers. Uh, NUA stock. Is that a stock ticker? Is it a stock strategy? We'll talk about it and much, much more. You can sign up for the event coming up Thursday at 630. Seven steps for retirement readiness, 630, December 7th. Sign up at chadburton.com. It's a webinar or robblackshow.com. This interview featured on the Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more at robblack.com. For those listening to radio, this is AWOL Nation. I just want to be the best. Um, pretty interesting because in investing, there's a pursuit of wanting to be the best, but there's something that comes along with it. And it's risk. The higher you return, the higher the risk. And if you're wealthy, are you really choosing a higher risk or are you choosing to protect your wealth? Something CFP Chad Burton does for a living. He and I have worked together at EP Wealth. Uh, but we've worked together and we started a company together over 25 years. Uh, we built New Focus on New Focus Financial, excuse me. Uh, your podcast is called New Focus on Wealth. People could find it. People could find you at chadburton.com. It's chadburton.com. He's also a regional director, um, kind of an uppity up. He manages many CFPs for EP Wealth. I think that's the right way of saying that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chad. But let's move into the next content. Oh, by the way, Steph Curry is joining George Clooney and Ryan Reynolds in making spirits. He's going to do a whiskey. And that gets me thinking, Chad, you and I should do a whiskey. I know. You know, I'd heard the other day. I didn't look it up yet. Did, did George Clooney sell Casamigos? Yeah, he sold it. Uh, he did. So I think he might still be involved in the marketing. Uh, gotcha. Did you know Casamigos while we're chit chatting about it? In the Bay Area, it's sold really at the, only the high-end grocery stores like the Molly Stones. It is not sold at the Safeways. You know, I do, I do like it. I do like the Blanco. Oh, interesting. So mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not a hard liquor person. Um, okay, so let's get back to the content for the seven retirement readiness tests. Um, big event coming up Thursday, 630. You can sign up at chadburton.com. While you're there, there's a lot of podcasts. There's a lot of downloads. There's a lot of PDFs. One of my favorites is 15 things to do before hiring a CFP. Chad, what's the process of a rollover? And when we're talking rollovers, I think we're talking 401ks. Are we talking IRAs? What are we talking in specifically? In this, in this case, of a, a 401k to IRA um, at the point of retirement, right? Okay. Um, so typically people, you know, they, they go in, they retire, they want to consolidate their assets, create a income plan. How much should I be drawing from each type of account, including uh, my IRA? And sometimes you're drawing and spending from your IRA. Sometimes you're converting small accounts from your IRA to your Roth each year. But the first step is... Um, to get consolidated and get everything in one place and and do a 401k rollover. 
And that can be intimidating for a lot of people, right? You're, you're saying, how do I move money out of my company's 401k to an IRA that I can access anytime I want and invest in pretty much anything I want. And so the first step to that is to choose where you want to have your IRA, right? And most people will choose um, like a, a Fidelity or Schwab, right? Because in a Fidelity or a Schwab IRA, um, you can invest in pretty much any stock bond or mutual fund you want and create whatever asset allocation you want. And Fidelity or Schwab, you can choose to be self-managed to do it on your own. Or if you use a fee-only fiduciary-based certified financial planner like uh, uh, EP Wealth is, um, that's also where we manage our clients' money. So it's if, if you want us to manage it, your account's either at Fidelity or Schwab. It's your account. We're just signed on and authorized to trade on your behalf. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the first step is choose where you want the IRA. Do you want to do it your own on your own or do you want advice? Um, typically, if you want advice, you know, the, the people that will be helping you will open that IRA for you. Because the first step is you have to get the IRA, the destination IRA account open and get an account number. You have to have that before you start the process because most 401ks, when you do the rollover, you either just log in you know, Fidelity, for example, is 401k.com or net benefits. And you process the rollover online, or sometimes you just have to call the 800 number and process the rollover. And so in either scenario, whether it's online or calling in, in mm -hmm. a very rare case, it's a form that they have to send you, like some of the older 401k plans or 401k plans with insurance companies, it's a form that they send you. No matter what though, you have to have that destination IRA account open. And then once you process that rollover, either online or calling the 800 number, they will typically send you a check to your home, Rob, but there's nothing you have to do in terms of signing it. It's already made out to your IRA. So you tell them, so let's say you want the account, the Fidelity or the, uh, the IRA open at Fidelity. It's going to be made out to your Fidelity IRA and the account number. And so you'll receive the check at your home. Um, you don't need to sign it or anything because it's already made out to your IRA. And then you have to forward it on from, um, to that institution. So that's either walking into a Fidelity or Schwab branch or, or mailing it. What I always tell people to do when we're helping clients do this rollover is we always request that the check be overnighted so that we have a tracking number. I don't want a large check floating around in the U.S. Postal Service. Um and then, then that way we can overnight the check right into the IRA account. I don't like to be fully out of the market for a long period of time. I mean, look at how much the market went up in November, right? We, we want to be in the market, not out. Um, so they'll, they'll mail you a check um, and you get the check deposited in your IRA. And then you or the advisor starts to make the trades and gets the accounts fully reinvested. How important is the 401k to retirement readiness? Um, I saw some dumb statistic today, you know, looking at Yahoo charts or something like that, that said, um, don't mess up the biggest financial transaction. Don't mess up one of the biggest financial tra transactions in your life. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, converting to 401k? Yeah, it just blows my mind. I see these articles. I've, it, you know, very rarely do I see this happen, but I have where people will leave a company and mm -hmm. they'll look at the like the first paragraph when it comes to withdrawing your 401k and they'll say, Oh, the taxes are only going to be 20%. So like big deal. I'm just going to cash it in, pay the 20% and move on. That's just the minimum federal withholding. When you get the tax bill, not only is it taxes or income at the federal level, but also at the state level. And then 10% on top of that, if you're under 59 and a half. So that's where some people just make that really stupid error of, of cashing it in rather than doing a direct rollover. Um, so that there's definitely some mistakes that are made out there. Um, and then there's a lot of nuances we, nuances that we can talk about after the break on on different tricks of the trade when it comes to 401k rollovers. So we are at break time, huh? Um, big event, last event of the year, webinar on retirement readiness. Um, it's free, seven steps for retirement readiness. You can sign up at robblackshow.com or chadburton.com seven steps for retirement readiness it's a financial goal that ever most everyone wishes they could obtain find out if you're in that list of, of check off boom 
Let's test. You can find out more at Rob Black Show or chadburton.com. Visit the Rob Black Show online at robblackshow.com. Listen to archive podcasts, market updates, and information from EP Wealth's certified financial planners online at robblackshow.com. Tying up a loose end, George Clooney did sell Casa Amigas for a billion dollars to Diageo in 2017. He was only a partner. He's only worth $500 million, which isn't too shabby for a actor who appeared on Facts of Life as kind of a, you know, a small role. Do you remember the Facts of Life, Chad? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I do. I, I remember also when my dad lived in Hawaii, I snuck into the Sheraton in the pool um, that was above Hanalei Bay at the time. It's a different resort now, but uh, Blair from Flax, Facts of Life was sitting at the pool. <laughs> So oh, is that true? Kind of hung, hung out and watched Valer all day. <laughs> Chad's brush with greatness, as Dave Letterman used to do. Yeah, that was only like 35 years ago. So, um, Well, I won't take that any further because we don't need to. But George Santos, <laughs> George Santos, the movie, HBO is adapting one of the books on him into a movie. So we have some entertainment to look forward to. We've hit the process of a rollover. Should we do the nuances of a 401k rollover? Or if we yeah, talk we do. I'm still kind of just like, was Clooney really on Facts of Life? I didn't, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. that. He had like a crush on one of the girls or something like that. It was literally like three minute roll. Are you that blown away? <laughs> I am. I am. You remember him um, from ER, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. that's kind of where I thought he got his big start, but I didn't realize he was in it longer than that. But anyway, yeah, nuances of the 401k rollover. Um, so, you know, we talked about last break on the process, you know, you set up a destination IRA account, you got an account number, then you process the rollover online or, or call the 800 number or fill out a form. And then they mail the check to you. And then you've got to get it to the custodian like Fidelity or Schwab, where you set your IRA up. But there's a lot of things that can happen um, besides just one check. So a lot of people are funding pre-tax money into the 401k, as well as um, after-tax money into the 401k through the Roth 401k. So if that's the case, if you have different money types, you may need to open both a Roth IRA and a regular IRA to receive the two different checks that you're going to receive, right? So it's the rollover occurs in two different pieces. The other thing is that um, a lot of plans that we talk about, Rob, now, um, you know, the mega Roth 401k, where people yep. can sometimes put in $30,000 if they're over 50 pre-tax, and then a large $10,000, $20,000 post-tax into the after-tax bucket into the 401k, which gets converted into the Roth. One of the things you have to do before you do the rollover is call the 401k company and say, do I have any after-tax money? And if so, you usually want to convert that after-tax money that may be sitting in your plan and what's odd is a lot of older plans, like people that have been with Lockheed Martin for years or didn't come have after tax buckets and they, they don't even really see it on their statement, but there's after tax money in the plan. And you can actually convert that into the Roth 401k bucket before you do the rollover. So sometimes you have to do that, wait a few days for that process to happen, that that conversion of after tax money to the Roth, and then you process the rollover. So that's one of the nuances that I keep running into as well. Um, and then should we talk about uh, NUA company stock in a 401k? Yeah, what is an NUA? So NUA is, it stands for net unrealized appreciation. And simply what it is, is that um, let's say you have company stock, the company that you work for in your current 401k plan, um, not an old 401k plan, but we're talking about the current 401k plan that you're in now. Um if you have company stock, and most of the time it's companies that give you match in the form of company stock, and so you look in it and you're, you know, you're, um, yeah, like Lockheed Martin or uh, in some cases Raytheon or, or these different companies where you're you have company stock in the plan. This is when rollovers can get a little bit tricky, and a lot of analysis comes into play because on that company stock portion that's inside your four hundred one k plan. At the time of your retirement or separation from service or reaching the age of 59 and a half, when you end up doing a a full distribution of the 401k plan, a full rollover, at that point in time, you can take that company stock from the 401k plan and just transfer it over into a normal brokerage account 
non-retirement account at your in your name. So you could, you know, open up a normal brokerage account at Schwab or Fidelity and have the stock transferred in kind in that account. If you do that, you're going to pay taxes um, on the, you're going to pay ordinary income taxes on the cost basis of the stock that's in the plan, which sounds weird, right? Cause you're, you're it's like IRA, it's all pre-tax, right? Well, no, you can look inside the 401k and say, okay, all of this stock, you know, maybe I have $300,000 worth of stock, but it was given to me, um, at a total value over the years of a hundred thousand. And so in that case, when it rolls over, you might pay taxes on a hundred thousand, which is the basis of the stock. And then the other $200,000, is non-taxable until you start selling the stock and then it's taxes, capital gains. And so there is an issue of, is it wise to pay the taxes on the basis? And how does that help you? Well, one of the ways it could really help you is it can reduce your required minimum distributions on the amount that goes into the IRA. Um, and then also when you sell that stock in the future, it's capital gains bracket, which is a different bracket than the ordinary income. And those two brackets play together. We're going to talk about that on the seventh. Um, and and how blending income from different types of accounts can really keep your taxes super low okay. in retirement. Um, so there's a there's a lot of benefit <clears throat> in doing that. Um, and so you really got to get some uh, some good advice when it comes to I I do have company stock inside my plan. What should I do about it? Is it worth doing the NUA? Uh, maybe I should just sell it inside the plan and diversify it and forget about the NUA. Um, it's it's a quite a decision and, and you know you've got to do a financial plan that includes some tax analysis the first one or two years of working with a cfp i've had a lot of aha moments in the last three um <clears throat> the tax efficiencies of of taking income and taking capital gains and figuring out where you are strategically um and doing it right because i'm not saying math isn't my strong subject i'm very good at math um still helping a ninth grader as his tutor <laughs> but um it's impressive what you're, what you do, Chad, as far as these blends go. And you say it in such a calm manner. It sounds like you're just blowing past it. And it's not lost on me. It's, it's a lot of smart to do things efficiently, like 5%, 10% better. That goes a long way though. Yeah. I'm kind of used to the idea that a lot of what I talk about on, on radio, it, you know, a lot of times people are driving or at the gym, listening to the podcast. And that's a lot of information, a lot of tax stuff. And a lot of it's just meant to be, uh, Hey, it's just spark some interest. Say, Hey, that actually sounds a little bit of my, like my situation. Maybe I should look into this a little bit more. It's like little tidbits that get people to finally do a full financial plan to figure out where they are at in the path to retirement. Um, or if they're already retired, what are they doing now? And, you know, are they getting what they pay for if they're paying for advice? Are they even sure. Is anybody even talking to them about these issues? I think when you get what you pay for, it kind of feels like you've insured your wealth and it kind of feels like um, there's more than just investment management, which is something you hound on that EP Wealth is really good at doing, offering a lot of very different products and different services for individuals. Um, but we can go into that at a later time. Are we done with NUA stock in a 401k? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's about as much as we can hit in terms of uh, complication for radio and the tax issues on it. It's just basically the idea is if you have company stock in your 401k before you do the rollover, you better figure out what are your options and is there something you know better for you at that distribution event? And that's like I said, typically it's you retire, you separate from service and you can't have start. You have to do the whole rollover and the NUA all at once. You can't, you know, do a little bit of distributions and then finally do it. It's kind of, there's a, there's a whole bunch of rules around it, but it's very uh, unique and it can be some really good benefits if you do it correctly. So during the pandemic, I think a lot of people quit their jobs and started new jobs. And when they do that, Chad, there's a, um, how do I say this? Typically you have to roll over your 401k or you have that idea of rolling over your 401k, or you have to look into your new company's 401k. A lot of younger, newer companies have been ESG focused and that gets a lot of heat, positive and negative in financial media. When does it make sense to roll your old 401k into a new 401k with a new employer? Um, so the biggest time it makes sense is that if let's say you're a high income earner and you make too much money to fund a Roth IRA directly. Um, and what I mean by that is, is your ability to fund a, let's a, a Roth IRA. So first of all, it assumes that 
you're maxing out your 401k, whether it's pre-tax or Roth, you're maxing out your 401k deferral limit. Um, and then you have extra money to save on top of that. And you want to be able to put money into a Roth, but you can't because you make too much money. Um, those are the type of people that should probably roll their old 401ks into their new 401k rather than an IRA. Because if you don't have any IRAs and you make too much to technically fund a Roth, you can still do it, Rob, with a backdoor Roth IRA, where you open up a regular IRA account, you make a contribution to it. On your tax return, there's form 8606 you file saying, hey, this is a non-deductible contribution. I'm not writing it off. And then you turn around and convert it to the Roth. But if you would have rolled your old 401k to an IRA, you'll screw that tax-free event up. So that's the type of person that typically, as they're still working and building wealth, that they will tend to want to roll their old 401k into the new employer's 401k. However, you still got to look at that new employer's 401k and get a fee schedule. It's really easy now to get fee schedules from your 401k plan because the new 401k is super high in fees. Like it's with an insurance company. The internal fees are really high. The investment choices are poor. It still might not be worth it. The issue here is that you're supposed to get advice from a fiduciary, right? Somebody that's a certified financial planner practitioner that does fee-only planning and will point out these issues to you. What are the pros and the cons? What are the fees in both scenarios? So you can make a good decision. Coming to the webinar, it's our last event of the year, Seven Steps for Retirement Readiness. It breaks down everything into just a few steps. It's nice, it's easy, it's understandable. Taxes, healthcare, investing, long-term care, savings, tax-efficient distribution strategies. It's Thursday, December 7th, 6.30 to 7.30. Sign up at chadburton.com. It's a free webinar, chadburton.com. Think you're in good shape for retirement? Find out how you're really doing with the seven steps for retirement readiness. Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors Thursday, December 7th for a live webinar you can watch from home. Chad will walk you through these seven steps to find out whether you are really ready for the retirement you want. Rob will provide timely commentary and Chad will share specific strategies for taxes, income, long-term care, safe money, investing, life goals, and more. If you have at least 500000 in investable assets and want to better gauge where your retirement stands, pass on your estate, and create tax efficiencies, this event is for you. The 7 Steps for Retirement Readiness Webinar, Thursday, December 7th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Sign up today online at robblackshow.com. Can't make it to the live webinar? Register to receive an on-demand recording after the webinar concludes. Go to robblackshow.com.